Deeper Path compares to other techniques um, in that we know that we're able to reliably implant a hip and reliably put implants into, uh, into what we consider to be an optimal position, regardless of the approach. The most common or maybe the most exciting uh, minimally invasive approach other than superpath right now would be the direct anterior approach and its, um, and its subsequent modifications. And the direct anterior approach is a very great way to do hip replacement. We know that it's reliable. We know that it's reproducible. We know that it can be done very safely. However, in order to get a good exposure from a direct anterior approach, a patient is often put into a superphysiologic um, ab um, extended and externally rotated position for the hip. Not a problem because the patient will heal up quite nicely from that, but it does create a significant amount of force and, and, uh, and also indirect dissection around the hip, which can slow the healing process a little bit as compared to a technique that would leave the hip in a more relaxed position. Well, I wanted to find a, a minimally invasive technique that I could offer to every patient. And in the initial phases of the, my use of the anterior approach, I had to make choices and I didn't want to have to figure out who I could do it on and who I couldn't and so I decided that the super path might be a great option for me because I could do it on everybody. In terms of learning uh, a new technique like the superior hip approach, this operation was designed specifically to be in a familiar position, to be extensile, and to be an operation that is incrementally attainable. So you can make a traditional incision, you can make a traditional fascial incision, just work on one step or two steps of that operation, and then bring some more in, and then eventually you can try and preserve tissue, eventually try and prepare the femur in situ and remove the femoral head without dislocating the hip, and then assembling in situ. These are all incremental steps. But you can always blend right back into what you're familiar with. And so I don't think there's any one day you have to do this operation start to finish. You can just blend in and out of it depending on the complexity of that particular operation, the experience that you have in your comfort level at that moment. And I think that's important because if a patient's upside down on a fracture table and you can't get it done with an anterior, you're boxed into a corner, you have no way out. You have to make a separate incision or extend a little bit beyond where you really should through an anterior exposure, and it really traps you. With this operation, you can extend it as you need to, and so that creates a great backup margin of safety for new adopters.